uh, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, I cannot see you, uh, but uh, I assume uh, you are there, so how many people are there? <laughs> Well, I would say roughly 60 to 70 people are listening now uh, to your presentation. So okay, 60 to 70 people. So it's here. quite an honor to, to speak to such a large audience and I hope uh, I, I can keep you uh, or get you interested in, in, in my presentation and topic. So uh, my name is Andreas Titek and uh, uh, I'm working at the Division of Learning and Didactics at the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences. And uh, I quickly step into the topic um, because, uh, as we all know and have experienced, uh, our success uh, is highly dependent on motivation. So motivation and success are intrinsically linked. And um, to, let's say, um, get most out of my presentation, I invite you uh, during my presentation and during the topics that I'm introducing to reflect on your own experiences uh, during your life where you um, got motivated by different aspects that I will mention because it's not a, a one, one way of getting motivated so there are different ways how the environment or we ourselves um, put pressure or develop motivation to get things done. Uh, just a few quotes uh, uh, relating to uh, what I mean, the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. There is obviously a motivation in these people to, to do it. Uh, there are no secrets to success, it's just the result of preparation, hard work and learning from failure. So motivation also means to overcome obstacles, uh, to, to have the power to, to, to maintain. and. Um, and all progress finally takes place outside the comfort zone. That means uh, your personal growth uh, is always a matter of uh, insecurity or... Um, and all these aspects you will find in the different theoretical elements that I'm going to introduce now. So what is motivation? Uh, in principle, the study of motivation is the study of why people do what they do. And uh, motivation itself is what people desire, so what they want, what they choose to do, and what they are committed to do. In relation to learning, definitely it, learn, it influences what we learn, how we learn, and when we choose to learn. And um, it's of course a, a necessary cause factor for the success of learning. And it's also, and this is an interesting aspect, we also know uh, from our own experience, it is a consequence of learning as well. So, um, so the, 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 the uh, in, in German, the appetite comes kommt mit dem Essen, and the appetite comes during eating. And uh, motivation can also be called the engine of learning. So, as shown before, uh, success in learning is very similar to any kind of success. So that means for e-learning. <coughs> Uh, uh, designing e-learning uh, that without the proper motivation uh, for students to engage in the learning experience, these e-learning initiatives will be unsuccessful, they will be there, but they will not fulfill uh, what they aim to. Just a few theories uh, on motivation that are then used uh, more or less to um, explain why I present a certain way of um, developing courses. This is just an overview uh, and a classification of the existing main theories. There are a lot of theories about motivation. There are the so-called need theories. Um, the most, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, known is the Maslow uh, theory uh, of the pyramid of needs. Um, they are also called content theories. We have process theories. That means the expectancy theory, so people are motivated because they expect something in the future, so they are they want to overcome obstacles because they, they see the value in the future, whereas the other ones they want they really want to fulfill an inner need. Uh, and then the other one is just the kind of condition conditioning, the reinforcement theories of Skinner, uh, where the behavior is a function of the consequences. So if you get 
some good feedback, you will want to go more in this direction. I will shortly reflect on these three types of theories because I really like a lot this uh, theoretical approach to what we all know and have experienced, and now we can try to relate our own experience to, to these theoretical concepts. I like a lot this Maslow's hierarchy of needs because it's a very simplified, clear, understandable way and a positive view on a human. Because he says humans want, or uh, if the basic needs are fulfilled, all humans are going uh, towards their self-actualization and live up to their fullest and equal, unique potential. So we know, unfortunately, that if, some, if, pe if people have their basic needs fulfilled, sometimes they, they stop to go further. So it doesn't cover that aspect, for example. On the other hand, sometimes uh, the lack of safety can be really a trigger for motivation to, to move out of that and to, to, let's say, get motivated. So this is just a very uh, generic scheme uh, saying that when the fundamental basics are fulfilled, the other one can be started um, to get fulfilled. But it's a very, um, let's say, uh, schematic uh, border to view. It was improved by Aldeofa. Uh, the the <coughs> existence relatedness of growth model, uh, the ERG model, that is the growth aspect. Uh, that is important for people, so this is uh, satisfied through using their capabilities uh, and creating a fulfilled uh, life or, or, or um, uh, a set of, of competences. But also they, people want to be related, sharing thoughts, acceptance, social confirmation, and, and so on. So this is an important thing, and there is a pure existential thing that is about all kinds of material and psychological desires that might be a uh, minimum and, it could, and uh, there is where people start um, to um, let's say fight for for resources and that is what we also see and policy and the motivation policy for for uh, focusing on certain topics yeah is uh, at the moment obviously not driven by this when divided among people uh, the one's gain is perceived as the other's loss. Yeah? So that is uh, obviously uh, the motivation for the policy. So here uh, we already see that these motivational theories, they have really a meaning, uh, but we only can understand them if we apply them to our own experiences. Um, the other one, that is uh, McClear's theory of needs, so this three need, uh, theories, uh, he says that people have a kind of a need for achievement. They want to uh, achieve, they want to succeed. There is a, let's say, a drive to be better or, or to achieve something. Um, on the other hand, they want to have power. So this is uh, in an ape, calls himself human, very natural, that uh, people are striving for power and for influence and social hierarchy or something. Um, and uh, there is also in a social aid, uh, like we are, a need for affiliation, so good relationship and friendship is also important for us. So it's very basic, uh, let's say, fundamental aspects also covered here for that drive human performance or actions. And uh, the other one that takes already a little bit uh, uh, the, the environment more into into consideration is the so-called Herzberg motivation again theory. It means on the one side you have these uh, internal factors, responsibility, I want to grow, I want to have the recognition, and you see all the factors of the are in the motivation aspect here collected, and you have the hygiene factors, you have factors, external factors that uh, can be extremely dissatisfying and you work on them to, let's say, remove your dissatisfaction, covering, let's say, the process of getting the job done. And I think who has ever prepared a presentation for a congress or, or a paper or, or uh, has a deadline for a proposal exactly knows that the, the inner motivation is, is not that the, it's important, but the, the external motivation is quite 
quite uh, important at that point. So it's a kind of a game factor that you want to verify. Um, the other one, which is very much related to how people or uh, students learn and for examinations, for example, uh, and they, they just, people ex expect that when they have run through the studies, they get this job, or they will, uh, my performance uh, is related uh, to that uh, reward. And that is why people, in many cases, uh, let's say, participate in learning, because there is this expectation, and that is covered by this model. And you see, different motivational models exist to cover what is uh, happening. And then, maybe this is the most basic and biological reinforcement conditional or conditioning model. So if you, you reinforce a behavior once a reward is provided, which can also be, let's say, used in e-learning environments and uh, it's a versa of weakening any behavior the punishment is used. And uh, the, in this hint, this is very interesting, um, you can translate that to different levels, but on the one hand, you could, uh, let's say, have a positive reinforcement, that means everything, every, one, uh, thing, uh, every time the thing well goes well, you reinforce that, and negative reinforcement means that you leave out uh, the, the punishment one, once uh, something is achieved. So it's a kind of negative reinforcement leaving out uh, that. And of course, the undesirable things, they, they are, are working with negative So. Having that in mind, and now you have a little bit reflected with me on also your experiences, now we want to apply that to adult learning. And when we apply to adult learning, and, uh, uh, and I'm talking here also about non-traditional students, uh, and the high diversity of the students existing, in principle an adult learner, also me, maybe you, everyone in this uh, age who wants to learn is selective. We only learn really what is meaningful for us. Uh, we are not very much inclined to something that is not interesting, where we cannot see the meaning or importance. Of course, it is kind of self-directed. We take responsibility. We want to have the choice when to do it, although we are happy when we get support in our reminders and things like that. Um, so self-direction is important. Many adult learners have been away from formal schooling uh, for a long time, and if you go into something new, uh, you might have uh, uh, anxiety and uh, low self-esteem. So uh, you might be stressed because you are not sure how you will perform and if you will be able to do it, and things like that. So adult learners have also to be treated carefully. And, but they bring a lot of information already with them, the prior experience, and that is also important, an established system of values and beliefs. So it's a very rigid, explanatory model of the world that an adult learner has, and the success in principle um, uh, of education uh, 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 is built upon how the new information can be linked uh, to the existing network of beliefs and knowledge, or how can wrong beliefs or concepts be carefully adapted during the, the process. Uh, that means I have to take into consideration the prior knowledge uh, and also the situation of the learners here in point three and four. Uh, 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 that is very important to, to really uh, care and, 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 uh, about my learners and have information about them. And uh, in principle, they also learn in a very, they want to learn in a practical way, in a problem centered approach, and um, they want to see immediately how the course content is relevant to their current problems. So that is already defines more or less uh, a, a successful setup of a learning environment, and here just a few scientific results um, about uh, the course design elements in a blended learning online environment uh, um, that were most highly rated, 
It was, of course, the personal relevance in what they learned. And now you see the list that I've shown before pops up, or the list is retrieved from that. So you can see it from both perspectives. The participation in setting their learning outcomes based on their real world needs. The self-direction of learning resources and pathways and the establishment of an active learning community, so the social aspect. And um, you see here, for example, the participation in setting their learning outcomes based on their real-world needs. I think that's especially important in adult learners. And the sentence for faculty developing courses with an online or distance components awareness that adults may value options, variety, self-directedness can help guide effective instructional design that will attract and contain adult learners. So, and also the, in the high value of effective two-way communication with classmates and instructor is very important. So, from this, we also understand already a little bit how that could look like. Another study from uh, uh, that uh, that shows uh, the main factors again connecting new knowledge to past experience, immediate significance, social interaction, the climate of self-reflection, self-regulate. So it turns out that these factors are the real core factors for adult learners. And now we know about our learners, we know what they want, mm -hmm. we know maybe not how to make a course and how to make a motivating course. And um, uh, this is now, there is a system called uh, the, the ARC system of Keller, uh, 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 but I will later uh, in detail introduce it. Motivation, of course, is now a, a complex issue, but we have understood basically that it really influences engagement, cognitive efforts, and uh, the ability uh, to process and construct information. So it's basic for learning. There is no learning, I guess, uh, except for co biological conditioning uh, without uh, uh, the, the motivation. The persistence has been found in any learning courses if the students are satisfied with the course itself and with the achievements. And that means for making uh, e-learning um, uh, really a success, we have to find the right combination uh, of the multimedia intuitive design on the one hand, the challenges, the relevant feedback, uh, and all the factors that I mentioned that directly or indirectly affect the learner motivation. So it's about design, it's about multimedia, it's about understanding your learner and also the all the aspects, including all the aspects of motivation. So, of course, I'm an instructional designer that wants to incorporate these aspects in e-learning at Boku. And for uh, designing courses, I have developed a scheme that I'm going through with my teachers, which is called the EDI scheme, Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. That's an instructional design scheme. I have developed also a mind map that I can go through in detail and we answer all the questions and aspects um, along that scheme. At the end, we evaluate the course and make it better the next year. Um, very, very simple factors in a course, that is the usability, and this is presented in the ELSE, uh, e-learning and didactical recommendations and quality assurance. Um, the motivation is linked to the usability of the course, so the technical setup, the structure, uh, and the navigability, and so on, is very related. So uh, from the technical side, this is a kind of design aspect, comfort in using the environment. And there are some recommendations. I don't go in very much detail. You can find this uh, online uh, at, the, at, the, at the Boku and in the web. So there is this basic. I want to have a nice online environment that people can easily navigate. But for the instruction itself, for the EDI model, there, uh, let's say, is uh, another important uh, contribution that came from Merrill, which is the first principles of instruction. And now you see already that this is very much linked to how adult learners learn. And this is uh, 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 um, extracted these principles are extracted from a lot of um, instructional design courses or courses 
and is valid for different types of of uh, of, of courses that, that are uh, being held. So this is the success factors of instruction. First of all, uh, the learning is promoted when learner acquire knowledge in the context of real world problems. When the prior knowledge is activated as a foundation of new knowledge, on the, and on the other hand, demonstrating um, how that skill uh, is applied also helps a lot the, the people to see um, what is the goal of learning. So the demonstration is very important. What is uh, how does it look like if you do it? The application. So I have I can really apply it to a situation, and uh, then I integrate it. I can, I can discuss it. I reflect on it, uh, and and uh, I really make it part of, of myself. So when you cover these aspects in the design of your course, then it will be highly probable, it will be uh, a good course from, from, from the learning. But still, uh, what about the motivation? Um, this is, learning takes place best uh, for like this, but the, the motivation, and there this ARCS model from Keller came in, which is uh, built upon the covering, the, uh, catching the attention, showing the relevance, building confidence, and satisfaction uh, with what I have achieved. The so-called ARCS model, and the, this ARCS model uh, can be now matched to the EDI model. And you can cover the attention, relevance, con confidence, and satisfaction aspects along the different steps of your uh, didactical design or instructional design following the EDI model. For example, in the analysis, you maybe identify the learners, what is the learner group, what is their needs. You maybe find interesting examples uh, 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 that, that to, to arise the, 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 the curiosity. So you, you analyze what can be interesting for them. So, but you, you do it for all the attention, relevance, content, confidence, and satisfaction aspects in all the steps. In the design, uh, you, you generate the performance objectives, meet the effective needs, select the appropriate strategies, uh, media that are best motivating. So you, now you are really, uh, again, applying this motivational aspect to the design. Then you develop. That means uh, most of the best cool software is not available, so you end up with uh, some uh, course in, 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 uh, in uh, let's say, a uh, learning management system that has not all the intended um, effective uh, uh, features. So it's a lot of uh, a compromise here. Then you implement it so the course runs. And here, this is very much important. How can you make an online course? The implementation. So the course is taking place here, um, working. This is uh, this is uh, how can you have to think about? Uh, this is uh, uh, in the design and development. But during the implementation, it shows if it is working or not. Yeah. And the implementation, if it would not be an in an e-learning course here, teacher would stand in the classroom and would do something. And in the evaluation, of course. You, you capture the aspects, attention, relevance, confidence, and then you analyze and make it better the next time. So, uh, Kenna has published also a list um, uh, of how to, of questions uh, 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 to go through, and even a very complex uh, uh, scheme, 10, 10 step scheme, uh, uh, to go through for um, uh, uh, motivational design. And uh, I think that is really uh, an, 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 a valuable contribution, matching instructional design principles with motivational design principles. And that's it. That's my contribution for today. I have added all the literature I have used uh, uh, in that presentation. And uh, I want to, I'm open for questions now. And, uh, 
I hope uh, you enjoyed the presentation and also you, you captured what I wanted uh, to tell you. Thank you very much.